Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we've got a late night insight or quick hit video, if you will, on a fragrance that was sent to me by one of you, one of my fantastic perfume god people. Thank you very much. You know who you are. Uh, this is an imaginary author scent, and this is Every Storm a Serenade. So this showed up, if you've been following my channel, yesterday uh, in the This Is Not A Top 10 Rhubarb Slash Eucalyptus video. And there is eucalyptus in this fragrance, which is a very strange note in perfumery. And if you didn't you know, smell some of the eucalyptus frags, you would probably think there's no way a eucalyptus note would work, but it does from time to time. This has eucalyptus, but it also has a couple other things. It has, here's the note listing, ambergris, calone, danish spruce, eucalyptus, sea mist, and vetiver. So if you know anything about the house of uh, imaginary authors, uh, it is a house that is run, at, so the owner and the perfumer is a gentleman named Josh Myers. And Josh Meyer is, um, is, he basically runs the brand and does the perfume himself. Uh, and the whole idea behind every, um, or behind Imaginary Authors, if you're not familiar with the brand, a quick synopsis. Basically, they come up with a story behind each fragrance and every fragrance has uh, an imaginary author that has written a blurb about it and turned it into a, per a perfume. So for example, uh, Every Storm, a serenade says, when Stina, a burgeoning writer, decamps to her mother's summer house for the winter to write a book, her trip overseas overlaps for one day and one steamy night with a brawny fisherman named Olve. While she struggles to gain traction with her novel, her fixation on the mysterious seafarer results in countless unsent leather letters, the contents of which chronicle the spiraling psyche of lust and longing. Set, aside, set on the desolate west coast of Denmark during the tourist off-season, every storm a serenade is a meditative masterwork that will lull you with its well-designed sentences and intimate tone. When to wear this fragrance. Don't be detoured by perceptions of ambergris. This is an everyday scent for those with discriminating taste. Okay, so stuff like that. That's a great example. And I do own a couple bottles from the brand. I own Memoirs of a Trespasser. So this is what the brand's packaging looks like. It's very clean and simple. It has a magnetic box, which shuts. Uh, and Cape, Cape Heartache is the other one that I own. And this smells like a sticker that I had in the first grade on my pencil box and you would scratch it and it would smell like strawberry. This smells like strawberry, that strawberry sticker with a little bit of feeling agil in the background. Crazy scent, but the strawberry sticker personally lulled me in. So it's a, it's a, um, it's a house that's a little bit out there. Okay. And, um, I have basically most of their uh, scents in these little samples. I don't have enough to give a full scent of the day. So I do them on these, you know, late night insight videos, if you will, um, because I want to be able to talk about these, but all I can do is spray it on before bed, wear it for a couple hours, give you my very initial impression, not even an, an early impression. Today I did an early impression video on Jill Sander Man Pure. I wore that as my scent of the day and I can still smell it. It's beautiful. Um, but every storm of serenade, uh, or these late night insight videos, I should say, uh, are, um, more, even more compressed. Okay. So take what I'm going to say with a grain of salt, but here's kind of what I got in the first couple hours of having the scent on my skin. And just so you know, 50 mils is 95 bucks. So, you know, they are niche price, but they're not insanely niche priced. And um, so here's kind of the take, in, and I think you have an idea. As soon as I saw Calone, um, I always kind of curl a little bit because that aquatic, um, fresh citrus, you know, thing is not my thing. Uh, as many frag heads will attest, freshies are usually not our thing. We like the heavier, deeper, darker scents. Um, and, you know, Calone in particular is a note that many frag heads struggle with 
They consider it to be not interesting, you know, that aqua de joe genre of fragrances from the 90s. Although there are some aquatic scents I can really appreciate. One is Creed's Aralfa. I really like Aralfa. Um, another that I discovered just this year is this. It's called uh, Mario Valentino Ocean Rain. And this is uh, from the great Edmund Rudnitska. This uses Calone to perfection. And the reason why I bring this up is I'm giving Calone a chance, where before I would probably just completely write it off. Uh, and here's my take on how this basically smells. So when you first spray every storm a serenade, you're going to get hit with something that smells like you've just sliced open a cucumber and added a bunch of salt. And if you've ever had or been in a household where people do that, my father used to do that growing up. He would just slice cucumber, dump a bunch of salt on it, and eat it. Uh, and you get kind of that, you know, watery, um, inside of cucumbers are, um, they're, they're very watery, and um, they have that green, um, liquid, you know, smell, and then you add the salt, right? And that's what you get when you first spray. Uh, and that's pretty much all you get for the first couple minutes. Then, what ends up coming to the forefront is a load of Ambroxan. That was the very next note my nose got a couple minutes in. Just like pure Ambroxan, like you're smelling the pure molecule, okay? And I thought, man, this is one of the cheaper, um, this is one of the cheaper imaginary author scents. It smells one of, like one of the cheaper imaginary author scents. It does do a course correction, though, I will tell you that. Uh, and then, so what ends up happening, is, so it, it, it just doesn't smell natural, right? That's the vibe, is it's very synthetic, you know, doesn't smell like ambergris. It says ambergris in here. Um, if you made, if you twisted my arm and said, Ramsey, are they using real ambergris? I would probably say no. Uh, but if the brand says they're using real ambergris, go with it. Uh, they're usually not going to lie about something like that. However, it could be a tiny drop of real ambergris and 99.9% .9 you know, ambroxan with salt. And um, However, slowly you start to get a little bit more facets. So instead of just 5 or 10 minutes in, if you go 15 to 20 minutes into the scent, you begin to smell something that smells like teak wood. You begin to smell something that smells like driftwood, like wood floating in the ocean, right? And uh, what it reminded me of is it reminded me of the way that I would imagine, I've never actually smelled it, but I would imagine uh, those old 14th century Chinese teak ships to smell like, okay? So we're starting to correct. We're starting to kind of do a course correction. I really dislike the opening. I wasn't a huge fan of what came 15 to, to 20 minutes in, and then you begin to pick up other notes. The eucalyptus starts to become uh, prominent with the spruce, and it basically, right now I'm getting a lot of eucalyptus, um, and it gives off this, you know, very sharp medic medicinal vibe. Go watch my eucalyptus video from yesterday uh, if you want to see some of the scents in my collection that use that very strange note, but it's very sharp and medic medicinal. And that's here. And you can really, it's, it's, um, it's not one of my favorite uses of eucalyptus. I much prefer the way eucalyptus is used in something like Bai Koros or Royal Mayfair by Creed. Um, this is, um, I guess it's really hard to use that eucalyptus note because it's so, you know, piercing and medicinal. Uh, and it's, it's like that in this scent. However, the spruce adds this element of um, it adds this element of wood floating in the water, but with green touches. And those green touches, when you factor it into the story of the scent, uh, it seems like algae. It feels almost like you're smelling algae growing on you know wood that's just been left in the water for. A long time, right? Long enough for algae to grow, uh, maybe small little sea plants. Um, that's the vibe, okay, at about the 15, 20, 30 minute mark. And then where the fragrance really begins to 
um, turn even even more. Imagine a, an aircraft carrier is turning, right? You can't just turn an aircraft carrier like you can a uh, you know a Mazda. You have to actually take your time. It's a very slow turn, right? That's what this fragrance does. It starts off. Um, it starts off almost off-putting for me with that Calone, that sea, uh, and they always have an imaginary note too. So Baltic Sea Mist is their imaginary note here. And, um, you know, with having family in upstate New York and going to Niagara Falls many a times when I was a kid, that, you know, waterfall hitting in the, in the mist forming from the falls is a, is a, sensation that's really known to me, right? But where this fragrance takes a turn and I begin to enjoy it more is the vetiver in the base. The vetiver in the base is the saving note for me personally. Now you may not feel the same, but for me, the vetiver in the base adds this, <clears throat> um, it adds this uh, layer of, um, you know, uh, for some reason, the vetiver makes it feel like you're still smelling the greenness, but it gives off this almost ice cold vibe. And the vetiver gives it this green, woody, it almost smells like you're smelling like a damp vetiver, if that makes sense. I know uh, on the channel before I've talked about, you know, um, smoky vetivers, earthy vetivers, woody vetivers, there's clean vetivers, there's all kinds of all kinds of vetivers. And I am not a vetiver lover per se. Vetiver is a note that I that I struggle with, but there are some vetiver frags that I've really come around to. Ancre Noir, the whole Ancre Noir series I think is one of the best values for money in perfume. Uh, I really like Nishane's Sultan Vetiver. I guess I'm one of the luck lucky ones because some people really complain about the amber woods in the base. Uh, and for me, it doesn't bother me. Amber woods don't bother me like they do some people. So I'm lucky in that regard because I really like Sultan Vetiver. It has four types of vetiver. I think it's an amazing fragrance. Um, and, 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 you know, there are other vetivers that we could talk about, but... Um, Basically, vetiver as a note uh, is a note that I see is, you know, very austere, very, um, you know, uh, I don't want to say off-putting. It's not off-putting, but it's, um, it's, it's, it's almost like I'm the boss and I'm keeping you at arm's length. You know what I mean? Like, we can, we can fraternize at work, but we cannot fraternize out at the bar afterwards, right? Because I don't want to give that image of myself as, you know, um, as, uh, showing favor to one employee or whatever it may be, right? You want to hold yourself to a higher standard. It has, vetiver has that very serious, austere, um, feeling to me. It, for whatever reason, it does. Uh, it's a very grown-up note, you know. Guerlain's vetiver, I think, is a perfect work fragrance. Ancre Noir, perfect work fragrance. Um, even Nishane Sultan vetiver, I would wear that to work anytime. Uh, and so when that vetiver comes in, my brain in this fragrance does like this twist. It stops thinking about it as a Calone C fresh fragrance, and it begins thinking about it as a vetiver fragrance. And what I found in the, and I've only had this on my skin now for a couple hours, okay? But what I found is if I think about it as a vetiver fragrance, I like it. If I think about it as a Calone C cucumber fragrance, I hate it. Um, for whatever, that's just probably my personal uh, bias against those types of fragrances. Because when I think about it as a Calone C ambergris fragrance, it smells cheap to me. The ingredients smell cheap and off-putting. But when I focus on the vetiver... I appreciate the vetiver for what it is. I appreciate that. No, my brain can almost like, you know, push everything else to the side and just appreciate the vetiver. And maybe that's just me. But um, hopefully this, uh, you know, just quick insight into my thoughts on Every Storm of Serenade are helpful. I know it's not a full review. 
you know, if it does something crazy at hour six or eight, I won't be able to tell you about it, but hey, that's the brakes. I mean, I only have a little bit of juice. I guess I could have worn it to bed tonight and then did the video tomorrow, but whatever. I have so many samples like this that I want to get through um, that it's this is going to have to fly for these late night insight videos, which Rich Mitch deserves like a, you know, a quid every time I use that since he came up with that. But um, I appreciate you watching. If you have experience with Every Storm a Serenade, do let me know. If you have experience with the House of Imaginary Authors, do let me know. I have a billion samples to go through, it feels like. And sometimes I just pick them at random. Sometimes, like this one I talked about on the Eucalyptus video yesterday, and it just caught my attention that with summer coming to an end, fall officially here, I wanted to knock this one out. Uh, and the vetiver in this, by the way, one thing I should say is, you know, uh, most people would probably think this is a pure summer scent. And that's probably when I would usually wear it the most if I owned a bottle. But because of the vetiver, I think this could easily work in spring and fall. Um, I don't think I would say this is like strictly a hot weather citrus summer frag. You know, it, it, it has a little bit more going on than that. So, um, never mind the corny, cheesy hookup story at the beginning with Stina in her burgeoning writing career. But, um, it's, I mean, it's interesting. Would I buy a bottle? Hell no. Uh, this will probably be the only imaginary author bottles you see in my collection, unless, you know, one of these samples really takes me, which, you know, I'm not holding my breath, but anything's possible. Um, so yes, I would love to hear your thoughts on Every Storm a Serenade. If you have experience with it, do let me know. Uh, if there are others from the house that you're excited to hear about, let me know. And um, look forward to seeing you again tomorrow with another video. Thanks to everyone who subscribes, likes, comments, all that stuff is always appreciated. I appreciate every single one of you guys. And I love hearing your thoughts in the comments as well. Thanks, everybody. Bye now.